Hi guys, my name is Borodante. I decided to make a video game. I feel like this would be the thing that would let me actually find myself as an artist. But more on that later. Let me show you what I've learned in the last week. I'm super late on this video because of this. <laughs> and I made a video on MetaHuman before uh, about creating a custom realistic human character using MetaHuman by Epic Games. But right now it's all about using Unreal Engine by Epic Games. While this may be really close to what I showed you before when I uh, opened Unreal Engine by the end of that video, it's actually pretty different. The difference is that to create this I wasn't using a pre-built third-person project, like a template. I actually went ahead and created this amazing guy from scratch in Blender. And that includes modeling, texturing, rigging, animating, and putting it all together into the game's character logic. And now it works like this. So this is what it looks like when it stands still. And this is how you can run around. <laughs> so literally in the last couple of days I learned how to make inverse kinematics and all types of controls like that uh, in Blender to actually make the rig possible to animate. And then whatever it took to actually put all of it together, including for controlling it like this. So there's actually a bunch of different animations blending together. So this is the slow walk, fast walk, and running. Standing still and jumping. Which looks kind of weird. And generally it's all just a huge joke pretty much. But the point of this was of course to go through the basic mechanics of getting here, getting to the point of having the character actually functioning in the world created in Unreal Engine. Of course, all of the other stuff that you see in here is pretty much just assets from Quixel, but that's the functional part of Unreal Engine that you can actually use for free, which is really awesome. And I was struggling to, you know, come up with a video to make to actually like put my thoughts together to share something with you guys. I'm struggling right now as well, but today, like 30 minutes ago, I finally felt like I reached a certain little milestone. So I thought like, yeah, this is a good time to make that update. The milestone is pretty much that I figured out, like I, I sort of like felt certain confidence in understanding the way things work and that I can actually do it. And yeah, this guy is so funny and everything. The point of it was to create the most possibly basic thing, but to make it, you know, a working thing, including creating all the asses and the model and the skeleton and everything, and then going through with actually making it work here. Now, I still have to learn a couple more things, uh, and they're very important and big, I'm pretty sure. Like, generally, like, right now, this is not a game. This is just walking. You know how many indie games are called walking simulator? Well, they're not actually walking simulators. This is a walking simulator. There is no goal at all. You just walk around. This is what a walking simulator is. And a game involves certain mechanics, like something you have to do, and by the time you do it, it's done. The level is over. Like that kind of actual game mechanics. They're absent here. But uh, I feel like it's not gonna be that hard to make it work, judging by the rest of the things that it took to make uh, this character walk around. But yeah, that's pretty much my plan for the next week learning how to create game mechanics. Not something complicated, like I do need the character to just walk around. My main kind of inspiration right now is to create something in the spirit of Silent Hill 2. But it's gonna be like my way. I wanna make sure it's gonna be the kind of game where while it, it is a one-man project and everything, you know, a simple indie game, it has to have character animations and cutscenes, like 
custom animations like actual reactions and some kind of cinematography involved. So not just the basic games that you see pumping up everywhere where it's just, you know, just the raw mechanics and the end, you know, nothing else happening. I want the game that's telling a story. No reading notes or anything like that, it needs to be a cool experience, really scary one, looking forward a lot to experimenting with how to make you guys scared and everything, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So yeah, Silent Hill games, the first four plus PT, are probably my favorite games at all. So uh, I feel like not a lot of people can say that, I literally can say that Silent Hill is my favorite game. To this day, still, nothing really topped that. So that's the kind of thing I'm looking forward to doing, and I think the game like Silent Hill doesn't involve too much of complicated gaming mechanics. You walk around, you collect objects, you figure out what to do with them, plus you meet an occasional monster with very basic intelligence, which is probably also not gonna be too hard to do, which will be the second step of learning gaming mechanics, which is, you know, introducing some kind of AI to actual enemies. And that's gonna be a lot of fun as well, I think. I'm not expecting it to be too easy, obviously, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a challenge for sure, but I definitely enjoy the process of learning this, because it's just so rewarding. Like, right now I just made the character to run around, and I feel like I achieved so much. It's so good. So yeah, um, hopefully by the end of next week, I'll have somewhat of a, like, more of a solid understanding of how to make the actual game start and then finish. I need to go through all the basic mechanics, like right now I created a character from scratch, made it walk around, then I need to create a level that starts and finishes and switches to the next level and then it finishes and that's like the end of the game. And in between the levels and inside of the level, there should be switching to cutscenes and seeing how that works out, switching to different cameras and everything. So all of that involves certain tools and certain logics that I need to get familiar with, because I need to know my limits before I start coming up with more specific ideas, like generally the script of the game, like uh, the the main idea and everything, like what's up, horror-wise, you know, what's up, <laughs> and stuff like that. You need to figure that out, so then it would be, you know, concepting characters, concepting the main character, which is definitely gonna be happening on this channel. I'm not turning this channel into a game developer channel, you know, it's not gonna be that. It's gonna stay the painting channel, but it will be finally actually applied and I feel like it may get very interesting to follow, I hope. So we'll see how that'll turn out. But so far, it's been just a whole lot of blunder going on for the last couple of days. So this is the running cycle, there's the rushing cycle. Like it doesn't play to the end right now, but... So yeah, I created the whole rig from scratch, except for like basic bones, but that's just to save some time. I did already learn quite a few ways to automate things, like including the, the whole thing, like right now, all of these animations and the character and its textures and everything, I didn't have to like export into a separate file, then import, I just press Control u and the character updates in Unreal Engine which is so cool, knowing how it actually is supposed to be done, this is saving so much time, it's like live linking and everything, it's really cool. But uh, also like the whole rigging thing with uh, defining these controllers here and there, you know, with all these movements, let me switch to a prettier look, arguably. But you know, overall, I really felt like I need to learn this, because when it will come to creating, you know, monsters, I doubt I'll be able to use just a default 
humanoid rig that is uh, generated in here. So I went ahead and went through like manually creating everything, making things work with all kinds of constraints and all that. A whole bunch of technical stuff for you guys, obviously, probably because like less than 1% of my audience has an interest in 3D and all that stuff. But yeah, uh, I felt like this was really important. Uh, this is <laughs> like uh, in between the main character and some kind of monster. So there you go. So yeah, as I mentioned before, I really feel like this is a huge deal. I got so inspired by the whole Unreal Engine 5 release, not release, early release, early access. So by the way, I learned quite a few things about the fact that I should probably develop this in Unreal Engine 4 for now. Uh, it will be able to fully and seamlessly update to Unreal Engine 5 when it actually comes out but right now there's quite a few issues for instance right now with all this really amazing real-time bouncing lighting system like right now you can see the light the orange light is being reflected onto the character it's kind of dull but it's it's there but if i'll walk over the sand that is much brighter and supposed to bounce a lot more light onto the character right now is just pitch black. You see only skylight is somehow lighting it up, but almost black character in front because the sun is in the back. Comparing to this, there's some orange lighting, especially if I go right here. You can see it's hitting from the bottom and it's here completely gone. That's because it still doesn't support bouncing lights and reflecting at all the ground, like the landscape object and the landscape object is really important because my game is probably gonna take place in the forest, some kind of woods. Well, mostly, but like adding structures is not a problem. The problem is that there will be no decent lighting in the forest if you use Unreal Engine 5. Plus, there is a bunch of other things that kind of look really cool and work great, but certain objects, certain types of things are just not happening. So yeah, it's called early access for a reason. I've known that for a while, but right now it's, it's become like pretty obvious, like certain very fundamental things are that are really necessary, mostly in terms of just, you know, the graphics. They're not fully implemented yet. So yeah, Unreal Engine 5 comes out hopefully early 2022. So it's not that long to wait. Probably the development of the game will take at least that amount of time. And before that, uh, all it really takes is to just bake some reflected lighting, which is probably not gonna be too big of a deal anyway. So, well, lighting and reflections. I think it'll be totally fine, at least before the release, to work with that. But the inspiration started with the fact that Unreal Engine 5 came out, and it gave me, like, this idea that the interactive world tools developed to a certain stage where they are actually artist ready. That I can actually, you know, sit down and come up with the world and with the, with a story to tell without having to, you know, change my life and like I still want to keep being an artist while working on this. And I feel like to a certain extent I can already do that. And while I'm quite a lot of a nerd myself anyway, I feel like I have just the right balance, like the cocktail of that, uh, to manage to create a game that is mostly story-driven, mostly animation and the, uh, you know, mood, the environment, the style, and all of that stuff focused. Also, a big part of all of this will be the soundtrack. I've played around with creating electronic music quite a few times in my life. Nothing specific, like I'm bad, but I feel like uh, for ambience, for certain like sound engineering kind of stuff, I can probably really pull it off, especially with the fact that you can, you know, if I create the sound myself, I can break it down into components and make them trigger in certain moments and dependent on the, on the actual events in the game, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to play around with that. So yeah, I guess this is my update. This is what's been going on so far. If less than 1% of you guys are interested in repeating my path, like following along with uh, 
learning Unreal Engine and stuff like that. I'll drop a few links in the description for at least one channel and at least one playlist that are really important. One of the playlists don't really exist. I had to collect all the parts of the huge tutorial myself from the Unreal Engine uh, official channel. So I'm gonna make that public and give you guys a link. If you're interested, it's about creating a third person blueprint project like this. And yeah, if you're generally even a little bit familiar with programming, while overall being pretty scared of it, and that's the main thing that keeps you away from making games. The thing with Unreal Engine is that you really don't have to write a single line of code if you don't want to. Especially if it doesn't involve some kind of inventive, super custom and weird gaming mechanics. And overall it's just basic mechanics of the actual character actually walking around, jumping, you know, doing whatever actions or shooting or hitting. That kind of stuff can be just made like this. It's still programming, but it's a huge difference. I can't stress this enough, like, uh, most devs that I watched on YouTube, they kept saying, like, this is still programming, you still need to learn programming. Well, yeah, but this is not programming. It's not the same. It's so not the same. It's so much better than actual programming. When you don't have to import some libraries and figuring out what the hell a protocol is and all of that is just connecting logics and that's it. All of that weird text nonsense is taken care of for you. And this is really important to me. Like the logics of programming I can definitely handle, but I don't have the time to learn the environment and syntaxes and all that stuff. Like you still need to learn a lot of environment to figure this out, but I mean, you just need to learn the program. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Probably next time I'll show you some kind of progress like this. It will be in Unreal Engine 4, because I'll, I'll be switching there. And yeah, hopefully there will be a few levels to finish. And till next time. Next week we're having an overpain episode, so you guys look forward to that. And tell me guys what you think in the comments. Maybe you have some experience to share, maybe some thoughts, maybe you're going through something similar to this. But that's most of my plans for the next six months. Another pretty exciting announcement will probably come next week or something. And for now, I thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Man, I gotta say, I was anticipating that this is gonna be something special, you know, to just get into it. But it's just the feeling of preparing your own model, rigging it yourself, creating all the parts of animations yourself, and then seeing it walking around like this, and actually being the thing, you know, really, it's just the best thing.